Jill, it is good to see you. Can you just tell us where your challenge stands right now? Yes, so Public Rights Project is representing a bipartisan coalition of district attorneys led by Sherry Boston. And we just filed a preliminary injunction motion a couple of weeks ago, basically asking the court to stop the commission from initiating any investigations or disciplinary proceedings. We're waiting on the court to set a hearing on that motion, and we hope to have that motion resolved by October 1st, which is when the commission is currently slated to start receiving complaints and initiating investigations. So, Jill, if your organization's lawsuit is unsuccessful, could this commission be a vehicle to punish and remove Fonnie Willis? Absolutely. Our problem with this commission and the reason why we filed this lawsuit in the first place is it gives essentially a blank check to a partisan commission. Democrats had no role in appointing members of this commission. And the commission has broad powers to investigate, discipline, and even remove prosecutors for a full decade, despite those prosecutors being duly elected by their own voters. And it has really broad criteria to initiate that kind of stark discipline. For example, it can discipline prosecutors for conduct that, quote, brings the office into disrepute in the eyes of the partisan officials who created this commission. And so we have a lot of concerns with this commission. In addition to separation of powers, it also is a tool to retaliate against prosecutors for free speech. Um, it can punish prosecutors for being honest with their own voters about their priorities for how to use their limited resources in the, the criminal justice system. And it really has, a, a, you know, almost a blank check to remove prosecutors just for doing their jobs. So, Jill, on one hand, then, you know, Governor Kemp, he signed this bill, but now he is speaking out against it. Do you think that the governor is doing enough to protect D.A. Fonnie Willis uh, in this case? So let's be clear. You know, you mentioned the political climate for Republicans and Trumpists across the country. Any Georgia Republicans standing up for the rule of law in this moment, like Governor Kemp is, those comments are welcome. The problem is they're too little and too late. He's already opened Pandora's box by creating this commission in the first place, and he only controls 25 percent of the appointments to the commission. So his statements don't really change the fact that he already created a tool for partisan retaliation against prosecutors in his state. You know, there really seems to be uh, a broader issue at hand across the country of political attacks on independent prosecutors. Your organization um, isn't just uh, playing in Georgia. You are supporting Andrew Warren, who was one of two prosecutors ousted by Governor Ron DeSantis in Florida. I would know Governor Ron DeSantis is also running for president. Uh, on social media, you've got uh, Donald Trump, who has repeatedly posted just very derogatory comments about every single lawyer or prosecutor that's investigating him. Is this happening more often in our current political landscape, or has this always been happening quietly for a long time and we just weren't paying attention? This is absolutely a new trend. Georgia is ground zero, but it's not alone. Uh, Public Rights Project has actually been tracking this trend for over a year. Over a third of states have considered bills to constrain or retaliate against prosecutors. We've been active in fights in Tennessee, Florida, as you mentioned, Texas, Mississippi, and others. And I think it's important to recognize the landscape that's kind of igniting this backlash. There have been a number of prosecutors, often black women, um, elected by voters, often uh, populations high in uh, black and brown voters, who have finally started winning these elections to elect prosecutors who think a little bit differently about public safety and are prioritizing serious crime. And so this is a trend that has racial and partisan overturns across the country. Mm. Jill Habig, Jill Habig, thank you very much.